Hello and welcome to today's video which is quite an interesting one. Uh, this is about a particular exercise that I have seen for a long time and I continue to see all over the internet. If you, if you put in a Google search for VMO exercise you're going to see the picture of this exercise here or something very similar. Um, I cannot just I'm going to use this video to explain why this is just a very, 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 very bad, terrible exercise and it's not a VMO exercise in any shape or form. It is just dumb. All right, so let me get into the reasons why. Firstly, the main exercise, the reason this is so bad is just so far from not being a squat, it's not funny. So you're basically encouraging yourself to learn a very faulty movement pattern that will you will be left with uh, once your knee pain's gone or whatever it is the reason you're doing it for. Um, I have no problem using a Swiss ball. I use it all the time. It's very very effective at um, guiding you into the movement. But you should not ever lean on it, like in the picture of this girl here. Um, this is just so wrong. Uh, really just learning to become a quad dominant position if you're for back pain this is going to give you back pain it's got knee pain this is going to give you knee pain you're not learning anything you don't need any flexibility through the ankle you don't need spinal control it is yeah it's just dumb all the, every way you look at the all right so it, with a squat you need to have if this is the load so this is where a bar would be if there's no bar it's just your body weight it needs to be an even distribution between glutes and hamstrings and quadriceps. And here's your little VMO here, all right? Now, we're going to get to him in a minute, but understand that the glutes and the hamstrings are really very important players here. It's usually because of a weakness here that you've got a knee problem in the first place. So just working on a VMO exercise is just dumb. It just makes no sense. It's just like, it, sure, it needs to be strengthened, but it needs, these guys are more important than him. He's sort of like the, the egg and they're the chicken. Um, for spinal control, you need to be able to maintain optimal posture. If you can't do that, you're going to compromise what's happening down here. So you need to learn correct positioning. Um, if you can, if you can get correct positioning, then you can correctly strengthen. If you can't correctly position, then there's no point strengthening because you're just going to create a further imbalance and get it wrong anyway. So this, this is just stupid, right? So this is the first reason why it's a, don't ever do it. Second reason encourages quad dominance. Now, why is this so bad? Well, for starters, like, you know, like surely we want VMO activation and VMO is one of the quads, but the glutes and the hamstrings are more important providing the stability and alignment. Um, read any literature and research on ACL injuries and, and you'll find that there's a, a common thread to it that there's a glute and hamstring problem. Um, and there's an over-reliance on the quadriceps. That's why girls commonly get knee injuries more so than guys. They have a generally a genetic uh, structural engineering that encourages that. All right. So sitting down too often creates knee tight hips, which creates tight quads, which creates problems for the knee. All right. So quad and hip dominance is a very most common way knee pain is created. So to have an exercise to try and strengthen a quad, and sure, yeah, the VMO may be weak, but it's really linked to the weakness of the glute first. All right, so um, now here's an example of like tight hips, which are, understand your your hip flexors are also knee flexors, all right? So rectus femoris is a very powerful hip flexor and knee extensor, all right? So if he gets tight at one, he gets tight at both ends. Now, tight hips create this anterior tilt of the pelvis, all right, so it tips the pelvis forward. Now, when it's tipped forward, the knees move inward and internally rotate. This, when this leg's internally rotated like it is here, and it, see the arrow going in, that's when you're starting to get problems, patellofemoral problems, you're going to get ITB friction possibly, and you're very much set up for an ACL problem. Um, over pronation of the foot, you probably end up with Achilles problems, shin splints possibly, all right. This ball here is encouraging you to do more of this and creating stronger hips and tight hip flexors. So basically, if this exercise starts to work, you will get better at being in a worse position, which makes no sense at all. All right, so just craziness. All right, so as we've just spoken about, this squeezing the ball, it's an adductor exercise. Adductors are linked to the tight hip flexors, so adductors 
uh, in the gym it used to be called the chick machine or the adduction machine. Like, it's just a crazy exercise. Like, why would you do that if you've got a problem with your knee? You know that you've probably got tight hip flexors and tight quadriceps. It's very, like over 90% of the people I see are have that um, for, with severe to just you know, common knee problems. Um, so instead of correcting your alone problems, you're now making them worse. And a great way to help you get to end up someone tearing an ACL. All right. Example of tight hips and adductors. So we've got Nathan, one of our trainers, going into excessive anterior tilt, um, tipping, you know, basically the adductors and that, like I showed you in that picture before, and there's the picture of a femur rolling in. So, so basically from this stance, he, now he's starting to shear, you know, and the, and the VMO, he's on the inside here, that, but these, because he's being moved so far inwards, these lateral um, ITB, TFL, vastus lateralis are going to try and drift the knee, the patella out to try and correct it instead of the glutes doing it. But they're just going to create massive problems for you. All right. So um, lastly, because if, if it's quite quite dominant, like it's going to weaken your glutes. So the glutes are the basically your engine room. And like we've said many times already, they're the key to getting everything aligned in the first place. Without being aligned to begin with, anything you do afterwards is going to be in a bad position. So as we just spoke about then, the ITB and vastus lateralis will start now have to start contributing a lot to try and maintain the alignment that your glutes are not doing. Um, and because you're doing this exercise repetitively, you're now telling the glutes, I don't need you anymore. These glutes being a phasic muscle now become even more lazy and weak. And if you continue to do it, it'll become a permanent problem. Now it's going to be a long uh, process of getting out of that, right? And no stupid VMO exercise. I don't care what one you've got is going to fix that. That is not a VMO problem. That is now a, a movement pattern problem with very, very weak glutes and hamstrings. Um, oh, and lastly, it's not specific enough to the movement you need. Now, parallel or two leg stance, uh, usually fairly easy, and there's because there's minimal stability needed. And often I might see someone perform a squat or a deadlift perfectly on two legs, just get them to stand on a single leg, and wow, that's a huge difference. Now, think about most injuries do they occur on two leg landings or twisting and turning from a two foot takeoff? And they never do. They always happen from one leg. So it means you need to test one leg because the one leg exposes the weakness within the entire chain of the ankle, the knee, the hip, and the trunk. Any one of those can break down and cause problems. Um, and like we said, most injuries occur on one leg, not two. All right, so, so a two-leg exercise will have minimal effect at improving your weakness. Sure, it's a great exercise to use, and we use it all the time, and it's very important, but it is only a stepping stone to getting to the single-leg exercises. If you don't get to the single-leg exercises, you're wasting your time. You're only half done. You're not even half done. All right, you only just started your process, but you have not anywhere to come close to fixing it. And it must be done standing up. All the Pilates exercises, again, they are just so low-level an exercise of lying on your back, pushing your bum up in the air. And again, we use them. But they are not anywhere near what you need to learn how to do if you want to. If you have a VMO problem, you must learn how to do a single leg squat, and you, if you play sports, you must learn how to do it at high speeds and, and at landing. If you can't do that, you can't. You're sort of a risk when you play. So what should you do if you're not going to do the stupid exercise of squeezing a ball? You can still do squats, like I said, but basically we would do the exact opposite. We would be pushing out, not squeezing in, and that would encourage the glutes to fire. I would be making sure that I have optimal alignment. Nathan here can maintain good range, optimal alignment. If he couldn't do that, we may use the ball, um, but eventually I want to get him away from that, and eventually I want to get him to single leg. The, the, understand that the VMO is going to contribute massively here when it's pushing out, not pulling in, because it's not even doing it anyway, it's just your adductors. All right, so you're not using your VMO. All right, if anyone who says they are, they do not understand their anatomy. Go and read some books. Just go and watch someone do a single leg squat. And, and yeah, I don't need to say anymore. Um, lastly, evolve to the single leg squat as soon as you can. You know, as long as your form's good. Obviously, you don't want this. To, that's that's where you've got the problems there. That's where the adductors and the hip flexors are contributing too much, and the glutes are doing nothing. All right, so. Strengthening is more than just leg strength in this, it's coordination, balance, stability, 
body awareness. The glutes are the most important part of this exercise and that's probably what you'll feel the most. Um, but again, you're going to be breaking down from anywhere from the ankles right through, through to the trunk. If you can't do this exercise well, then you're always at risk of getting a problem. Um, for more information on this, you know, if you're confused, go to our website. We have stacks of articles and videos. There's heaps of stuff about single leg squats, um, how to do that correctly in for sports and just for general uh, population as well. Um, and I'd encourage you, if you do have knee part problem, to get this uh, video and book as I take you through step by step how to get go through like stretches, basic stability exercises, isolating your strength and then integrating into these movement patterns with various things including upper body. So, um, you know, we've used this for years and it works all the time. You just, you just got to really follow the steps and not rush things. Um, it's not a quick process if you're coming from chronic pain, but, but highly effective. So, Go to our website, www.noregretspt.com.au and yeah, and you'll find everything you need to know there. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and shed some light on an exercise that is often, yeah, that is just crazy. So don't do it, all right? Um, look forward to seeing you in the next video.